Printers. No matter how you think about it, they can make your life absolutely miserable if you don't maintain them correctly. So that's what we're going to talk about next, coming up, right here on Better Biomed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to go over some of the basic printers that you're going to encounter while you're a biomed or in generally office buildings. It's important that you understand how these printers work, how the consumables work, how the user's responsibility is going to be definitely different than the biomed's responsibility. And we're going to go through every aspect of it that I can think of. And let's go ahead and start with printer technologies. Now, as far as I know, there's four main types of printers in most medical facilities. The first one is the one that most people relate to. That's going to be your laser printers or the zero graphic process printers. And I did a whole nother video about the zero graphic process and how it uses static electricity to transfer your toner onto the paper and then it melts it. So that's the zero graphic or laser printer. Next is the bubble jet, which is probably the printer that most of you guys have in your house. Bubble jet printer uses a liquid ink and it uses electronic signals to open up tiny, tiny little nozzles as it goes across in a scan pattern across your paper and it strategically places those dots of whatever particular color in its designated spot and then it mixes those inks to create different colors. Those ones are not very common in hospitals and there's lots of reasons. Cost, they're not really designed for an industrial environment and uh, the cost of consumables is, is pretty high. So that kind of leads us to these other two technologies and I've got some very fine examples of right here in front of me. Now there are two types of thermal printers that you are going to see all the time. Now the first type is your direct thermal and then the second one is going to be your thermal transfer printers. Now this is a GE strip printer <laughs> which is obviously taken apart but it uses a roll of consumable and that roll has a special coating on it that when it encounters heat it changes to a black color. So it's a chemical reaction that happens when it's exposed to heat and that is caused by a tiny little set of heated elements and each tiny little piece is part of the matrix <laughs> and I'm not talking about the movie type matrix. Each segment of the heating element has a responsibility and the more closely those heating element segments are together, the tinier they are, the higher the resolution of the printer. Most printers don't have that high of a resolution to begin with and you're going to see a fine example of that right here on my DFib. The way to tell that a printer uses a direct thermal consumable is you can take your fingernail and if you make a line across the consumable with your fingernail, it's a direct thermal consumable. Now you can also have in the same drawer the uh, thermal transfer consumables and they look very similar. And this is a common test. Drag your fingernail across it. Anyway, let's go into the anatomy of one of these printers so you can see what goes on inside them. A lot of them are pretty similar. Whether or not it's encased inside a device or it's a standalone unit, they're going to have very similar anatomies on the inside. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is a regular GE printer. It has an integrated power supply. You can see I get the IEC power input module. And on the inside, you can see that the AC mains comes down to a DC uh, regulated power supply. And then there is a communications board, which is right here on the back. And it communicates with your system, your telemetry system. And it also communicates with the printer because these printers can be quickly swapped out. You can see the back of the printer. GE actually thought about this. And they have two little screws you can take out and you can change out the module. So if somebody breaks off the front door or something like that, or you get a defective print head, which we'll go into in a minute, you can actually swap out the whole module. Meanwhile, your base unit is still fine. The 
This is the uh, controller card that sits on top. It's got your main CPU. There's two ribbon cables that come in. One of your ribbon cables in the back is your communications cable. And the second cable, you can see all the pins on it. Each one of those pins relates to one of the segments on your print head. So let's go ahead and take a look at the print head. You might be thinking, why is it that not every printer uses it? I mean, it, it seems very simple. You only load a consumable, which is a spool, and then you print. That's all there is to it. You don't have to worry about print ribbons or print inks. It just works. Well, the problem is, is this style printer is not really designed for long-term storage. It's not archival quality. And generally speaking, the resolution is going to be kind of low. And here we have the print head. And this print head is pretty typical to how you'd find them. It's slightly contaminated. The heating elements are tiny and they're located right here. See this gold bar? It's in front of all these leads. These are tiny little microscopic leads. You can see them right there. And notice right here are the heating elements. These tiny, tiny little guys right up here in the front. And you see all this black like tar? That is generally residue left over from the chemical reaction. And when it gets really cluttered up like down here, that's when you're going to experience print issues. And you can just take a regular um, alcohol wipe like this one here. And you can go over them and clean them up. So here I've got the print head to a direct thermal printer and it's got a series of leads and this right here is the junction where they're combined with the ribbon cable. So you can see all the little leads right here. They're all nice and organized and right here are the tiny tiny little print elements. Those are your little heated segments. And the problem is, is these guys will tend to get contaminated. Like here you can see it's clean because I, I cleaned it already. And on this side you can see it's contaminated. Well, all you have to do for when it's contaminated is take an alcohol rag like this one here and wipe it down. Take a look. Now all those little elements are clean. I can inspect. You can see if there's any physical damage across them. That's why I love having a microscope in the shop. And if anything, you can see that there's still some contamination down there. Clean. And if anything, you can buy a whole nother print head. Almost every single print head is obtainable. You can find them on the open market. They often have a part number around the top. Just do your research. But anyway, that's the print head to a direct print. That's how you clean it. That's how you maintain it. Pretty simple device but it's not for archival storage. And for archival storage, we have another solution. For archival storage, we use something like this guy here. Now this is a Sony thermal transfer printer. Thermal transfer printers are considered archival quality, but they're more expensive, they're louder, and they require two consumables. So the consumables for a thermal transfer printer are going to be your paper, which on this one it comes in a roll, and you're going to have an ink spool. This is an ink ribbon. And what this printer does, as you can see, it has different colors of ink that it will thermally transfer to the roll. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a latent image on the film right here, and that is from another print job. And that's basically what it does. It prints your blue, it prints your yellow, and it prints the red, and then it comes to a clear sheet where it can help clean the print element. You see this dark line right here? That's called an index mark. And the index mark tells the printer exactly where it's at on the print. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is even if you're printing a tiny little uh, subject, it's going to use up an entire sheet. There's nothing you can do about it. So it's every three colors 
plus a fourth clear is going to be a new print job. So no matter what the size is, it's going to go to the next sheet. So if you print small things, it's going to waste a lot of consumables. There's just nothing you can do about it. But this is considered archival quality. So this type of printer has to always be aware of where it's at and it uses those index timing marks to tell it that it's the beginning of a new spool, to tell it that it's the beginning of a new print job. You see right here, that's where it knows to begin again. It's got two different lines. So it hits this line here, it says okay, to clean your print head, and then it comes down here, it hits these two dark lines, it says okay, now we're back at yellow, we're gonna start printing again. It's a very cool printer. The print job looks almost metallic, which gives it kind of a cool effect. But when I say archival quality, it means that we can store it for long periods of time, like in a patient's medical record. To tell the printer that there is a new consumable that's loaded, there is either a Pico fuse or there's a little RF consumable that is attached. You can see here on the end of the roller how it's got two different uh, commutator marks. That's where contacts inside the printer will come out and they'll make contact when it's fully inserted. And on the other side is your drive train. You can see over here that I have a spur gear that will come out. It'll latch in right here. This activates the roller and you're on your way. So that is a transfer thermal printer. I figured this would be the excellent opportunity to whip out a few of my printers that I have laying around and show you guys how the technology works. You will be encountering these type of printers throughout medical facilities and professional office buildings. It's good that you know how they work and how you can maintain them if you need to. Keep them up and going. Some printers you have to change out the entire consumable and now you're back up and running. Other ones you might have to clean the print head and change the consumable. Things like humidity affect all printers equally, and things like wear and tear, obviously. So there is some user maintenance to all these devices. Usually it's just changing out the consumables. As a biomed, your responsibility might be to your users to show them how to properly load consumables, like on the Sony printer, because if they do it wrong, like if they shut it off mid-cycle and it doesn't have time to get to its home position, the drawer won't come out. The drawer doesn't come out, the users have a tendency of grabbing on it and yanking on it, and that really messes things up. These type of printers here, super simple for the users. The only concern is to make sure that the users load the printer in the proper direction, because if they do not, one side of the printer paper is going to have the conductive ink, the other side will not, so it just will come out blank, and that's going to be the complaint that you're going to get from your users, is that, hey, my printer's printing blank. Okay, so all you gotta do is tell them try flipping over the paper. <laughs> Pretty simple. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed these little videos about different technologies. This one's just about printers. Seems simple enough, but believe it or not, a good share of the service calls that we get are for these very items. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up down below. And if you have any suggestions for future content, let me know. I'm gonna be seeing a whole new group of technology because of my new position. Boop, boop. <laughs> but if you guys have a good idea for something that I should film, I'll do my very best to try and do that. Thanks for watching, guys.